the same tiles. The same tiles. The same tiles are like quartiles, which means you should have done the section on quartiles already, knowing Q1, Q2, and Q3. Except percentiles divides the data set into 100 equal parts instead of four equal parts. The one thing that I would like you to remember is the 25th percentile is just like the first quartile. So P25 is actually the same as Q1 because 25 over 100 is a quarter. The 50th percentile, meaning the 50th out of 100, is known as the second quartile, which we know is the median, and P50 is the same as Q2. Likewise, the 75th percentile is actually the same as the third quartile. So P75 is equal to Q3. In the examinations, if the examiner has to ask you to calculate P75, it's actually asking you to calculate Q3. The method to determine the percentile is to first determine in which position that percentile is found. For this, we use a very simple equation. The equation that we use says Pj is equal to j divided by 100 multiplied by n plus 1. This n represents the sample size. So we simply take the sample size and we add 1 to it. This j over here represents the specific quartile that you are speaking of. So if you are speaking of the 25th percentile, sorry, not quartile, percentile, if you are speaking of the 25th percentile, then J is 25, means J over here on the top is 25. Now let's look at this in terms of an example. Given, and I'm given a sequence of numbers, determine the 25th percentile, which I know is P25, the 62nd percentile, which will be P62, and the 15th percentile, which is going to be P15. Very, very, very important when working with quartiles and percentiles is to rearrange all the numbers in ascending order. If I look at the given example, this is given in ascending order. It will not always be the case so the first thing that you would have to do is to rearrange in ascending order. Failure to do that will result in totally incorrect answers. Let's go to the first example, the 25th percentile. In order to calculate the 25th percentile, which I now know is P25, I simply use the formula Pj is equal to J over 100 into N plus 1. This N is the sample size that I'm dealing with. How many numbers do I see from here to there? It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, which means n will equal to 11. My first step is to find the P25 position. I cannot go and get the answer immediately. I need to find out in which position does the 25th percentile lie in. And I simply use this by saying J is 25. So it becomes J over 100, which is 25, divided by 100 into N plus 1. N plus 1 is 12. 12 multiplied by 25 divided by 100 is equal to 3, which immediately means that the position of the 25th percentile is in position number 3. All I simply go here is I have to start off as position number 1 position number two, and this is position number three, which immediately means I have a definite answer, and the 25th percentile is equal to five. Now, it won't always be as simple as this. 
Let's look at the next example. The next example speaks about the 62nd percentile, which immediately means I'm dealing with P62, which means the J value now is 62. The J value is now 62. The N still remains as 11. I start off by finding out the 62nd position. The 62nd position is 62 divided by 100 into 11 plus 1. And this time I get a very funny answer, which is 7,44. And by no means is this the final answer. This only tells me the position. Always remember, when you are calculating percentiles, there's two steps. Firstly, calculate the position. And secondly, calculate the value. Now watch this. If I have to find out the position number seven, in fact, this is 7.44, I simply go ahead and I use this and say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is here, but this one lies between seven and eight. Now when it lies between position number seven and eight, it means my answer is between nine and 10 but not in the center. It's definitely not in the middle of nine and 10. It is between nine and 10, but 0.44 away from the seventh position. And the seventh position is this here. So how do I work this out? It's a very simple one. I know the answer is greater than nine. I know the answer is less than 10. And I know it's not directly in the center. So now I use a very, very simple approach. And I say the 62nd percentile is equal to nine. I get the nine from there. That's where I'm getting the nine from because I know it is greater than nine. I add plus this 0.44. I'm simply getting this 0.44 from up here because it's 7,44. It's 0.44 more than 7. So I put 0.44. The brackets is simply the difference between these two values, 9 and 10. And that's where I get the 10 minus the 9. Use your calculator as you see it, punch in the values, and you end up with a value of 8,56. And this is the 62nd percentile. The values here are a bit odd, but remember, percentiles are normally used for large data sets. Let's look at one more example. The 15th percentile. The same applies. J is equal to 15, J is equal to 15, N is still equal to 11. I start off by finding the P15 position, which is 15 over 100, multiplied into n plus 1 and I end up with an answer of 1 comma 8. Immediately you know 1 comma 8 is between the first and the second so it means I'm dealing with a value that must be between the first and the second because 1 comma 8 is between 1 position 1 and position number 2. Now immediately my answer is between 3 and 4 but it is not in the center. If this was 1,5, that means it would have been in the center. But it's 1,8, which means it's greater than 3, but less than 4, but slightly less than 4. Now, how would I go about getting the final answer? And again, I use the same approach as before. P15 is equal to, where does this 3 come? Remember, I've got two positions, 3 and 4. This is the first position, which is 3. Then I have the 0, 0,8. Where does the 0, 0,8 from come from? This 0, 0,8 is coming from here, where it's 0 0.8 more than the first position. Where am I getting this 4 minus 3 from? This 4 minus 3 is simply the two values that I'm dealing with. And the two values that I'm dealing with is the 4 and the 3. And I end up with my final answer of 2, 2. Thank you.